but those reports are underestimates because they are only based upon those who have died in hospitals. With medical experts suggesting that the true number could be up to 30 times higher. Imagine that, 30 times higher. The healthcare system in India has gone from overwhelmed to underwater. Underscored by shortages of key medical supplies like oxygen, there are hundreds of people outside every hospital seeking urgent care and medical equipment for their loved ones. City skylights are lit with an orange hue from the cremations and the funeral pyres that are happening in the hundreds of thousands. Meanwhile, the right-wing Modi government has responded with criminal negligence and ineptitude. They have used money that was earmarked for health care for campaigning. They have responded with their limited resources to prosecuting those individuals that are calling out the issue of the COVID catastrophe instead of actually dealing with the pandemic at hand. It's a damn shame. Right. shame. 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 But we need to remember that this isn't just the fault of the current right-wing government. This is a consequence of decades of privatization. Like in America, like in India, neoliberalism the world over. I'm going to drop some knowledge on you. Yes! India has less than one doctor for every thousand people. India has only 5.3 beds for every 10,000 people. While China, for example, has 43 beds for every 10,000 people. India has only 48,000 ventilators in the whole country. While China has 70,000 ventilators in the city of Wuhan alone. So India, which is about a billion people and the United States added on top, has 48,000 ventilators. And in Wuhan, which is about 11 million people, has 70,000 ventilators at the ready, right? Let that sink in for a second. And despite having the third largest pharmaceutical industry in the world, the vaccine rollout has been a complete disaster. With healthcare experts estimating it might take a whole year for every Indian to be fully vaccinated. And yet, India is one of the few countries in the world that is still charging people for the vaccine. How criminal is that? How, how evil is that? I appreciate your patience. Now we can't understate the role that global vaccine apartheid, because that's what it is, has played in this process. As the global COVID-19 vaccine production increases, much of the global sales faces severe shortages. The governments of the United States, Europe, and other rich countries have ordered or sold vaccines only to the highest bidders. As of mid-April, 56% of doses have been administered to high-income countries, while just six, with just 60% of the world's population. While the continent, the entire continent of Africa, with 17% of the world's population, has only gotten 2% of the vaccine, with most of having less than 1% of their people vaccinated. Now the hoarding of these vaccines is not an accident. Be sure of that. It is by design and it is actively supported by the United States. It is actively supported by the pharmaceutical giants in an attempt to rectify this gross inequity. India, South Africa, and 80 other countries propose a temporary waiver to the trade-related aspect of the international 